Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining me for today's oil painting time lapse. For a two hour real time version of this video, check out patreon.com slash happy d artist. So before I begin with today's topic of discussion, I wanted to just share a little bit about the story behind this piece and I guess kind of like what inspired me and my thoughts as I was coming up with the concept and working on this piece. So for this one, I was actually trying to experiment with doing a close-up painting of an eye. I had never done that before and I have a show coming up at a gallery in San Francisco where the theme of the show is to do a close-up of an eye. And of course, it's open to interpretation and artists can do whatever they want to do with that theme. And since I had never done a painting of just an eyeball before, um, I mean, I think I might have done studies of, of it just like to practice the anatomy, but I haven't really tried to make anything as a standalone piece of artwork that's just an eye in the composition. So for this piece, I really wanted to do like a trial, an experiment, and see what I could come up with with just one eye in the, comp in the composition. And um, I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. I wanted, first and foremost, not to do a human eye. I wanted um, the skin to be almost a pitch black bluish color, like it would belong to an alien or like a creature or a goddess of the night or of the stars perhaps. And I was just looking through my reference um, photos folder and I have so many beautiful photos of space and of the night sky and I saw this gorgeous close up of the full moon, I think it was from NASA or like the Hubble telescope um, official website. And I just had this idea to make the moon into the pupils and irises of the eye. And I just, you know, was so inspired by that concept that I went ahead and painted it without doing that much um, more reference photo searching. I just used that one photo of the moon and I looked up you know, um, a stock photo of an eye close up, but I didn't really follow the stock photo that closely either. I kind of just made my own eye shape and occasionally referred back to my reference photo if I needed a little bit of guidance in like where to put the highlight on this wrinkle and you know, like how do the eyelashes curve in this section. But yeah, I tried to minimize the amount that I looked at the reference photo. Um, and the moon as well, I really didn't want it to look just like a moon. Like, I didn't want it to look like I just photoshopped a moon onto an eye. I really wanted to make the moon look almost like wet and watery and part of the inside of an eye. So it definitely was challenging in that aspect to kind of bring all those different concepts together. And um, lastly, I really wanted to add something else other than just an eyeball. So I put this Luna moth, which um, Luna is also a word for moon. And I always thought of Luna moths as very kind of almost eerily beautiful creatures of the night. So I thought that tied in well with the theme. And yeah, and basically I wanted this eye to tell kind of a story of some sort of maybe perhaps like an alien or um, spiritual goddess of some sort who maybe is kind of like the guardian of the moon or guardian of the night. I don't know. Honestly, it's very open to interpretation. I just wanted to... I was aiming more for like a feeling. I wanted a feeling of something magical and mystical and something very dark and mysterious and very um, otherworldly, but not something that's scary or, you know, violent or gory. I just wanted something dark in a beautiful and poetic way. So I really hope that it came off that way. Today's topic of discussion, I guess, will be more like a story time. I might actually make a dedicated story time video for this and tie it into kind of my entire artistic journey. But um, for now, I just wanted to quickly chat about kind of what my childhood as an artist was like. I know a lot of you guys watching this, not all of you, but some of you might be a little bit on the younger side. I've gotten some emails from people as young as like nine years old and I know I read some comments from a lot of people who are in middle school and high school, so I, it got me thinking about, um, I guess, my daily habits and how I started art at a very young age and how it's never really left my life. It's never not been a part of my daily schedule. And I thought it could be useful to share for those of you out there watching who are on the younger side and um, perhaps it can help inspire you guys or give you guys some ideas on how you can um, 
start practicing now so you can build up your foundations to be stronger at art when you're older. So um, I've always done art as long as I can remember. I think my mom said when I was as young as four, three or four, I would always be drawing with uh, markers like in my mom's old notepads and sometimes on the wall. Sorry, mom. But Ever since I was little, I think I have my parents to thank for this. They saw that I had a natural interest in art and I wouldn't say I was like a prodigy or gifted in the sense that I was just naturally better than everyone else. Like I, I needed to practice just like everyone else, but they saw that the fact that I never got bored of doing art and um, they wanted to make sure I didn't lose it. So from a very young age, my dad told me that every day I should do one drawing every day and not break that chain. And I remember he gave me this example of like riding a bike or um, you know practicing sports. Like if you stop practicing for a really long time, you have to ramp up again. And um, once you stop practicing, you end up definitely um, having to backtrack and make up for lost time. So he said, if you practice really hard, you will improve. If you practice half-heartedly, um, you will stay stagnant. And then if you stop practicing, you will regress backwards. So for those of you watching out there, this is my number one tip to you, especially if you're young. Um, when you're young, I feel like your brain absorbs information really quickly. You can see yourself improve a lot more quickly than when you're older. Just, just think about people learning a foreign language. If you start learning a foreign language when you're younger, your accent, your grammar, everything becomes so much more um, authentic and you learn so much faster than if you try to pick up a foreign language when you're 35. So if you're young and watching this, Please take my advice. Practice every day. F try to find some time for it. Even if you just do one or two drawings, even if you're not happy with it, just find time to push yourself a little bit every day. Devote even 10 or 15 minutes before bedtime to practicing every day. I think when you're younger, those are the most opportune years. Those are very valuable years when you're developing and growing and your brain is like accelerating. So don't waste that precious time. Um, even while you're young, start practicing and preparing for your future because your adult future adult self will definitely thank you. Alrighty, so I think this is about it for the video today. Thank you all so much as usual for watching. If you're interested in limited edition prints, I have them available at happyd-artist.com and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye!